at Silicon Valley Comic Con with Spiritos Mechalakis. That's right. I actually got it right. That's a very good try. <laughs> oh. With a few more, a few hundred back. more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now your, your main job is... Quantum physics at Caltech. So I'm a quantum physicist. I'm faking it for six years now. Okay, and I believe that's the same college that they use uh, on the Big Bang Theory. That's right. Which you're probably we're, sick of hearing, we're, right? Yeah, we're the people. We're, we're supposed to be the inspiration, yes. <laughs> we're always much funnier than the, you know, Sheldon and the others, but that's what my mom tells me. Now, you uh, you're kind of a side gig. You're the consultant for Marvel, at least for Ant-Man. Have you consulted that's other That's right, movies, that's or? right. Well, in the future, hopefully, and, you know, the sequel to Ant-Man. I've been talking to Paul about this, so it should be exciting. I actually work with him for the first one to introduce the quantum realm, which is where he goes towards the end of the movie, if you've watched it, uh, where he becomes really tiny, really, really tiny, and then kind of disappears and loses himself. So the idea that I told them and they were excited about was that when you go quantum, when you go to that realm, right, where everything is possible, you kind of lose yourself because space and time are not there anymore, right? The laws of physics are kind of gone. And so it was fun discussing this with Paul Rudd and Peyton Reed and getting all these questions from them. But how is this possible, right? And what does it mean for him, like in the story, coming back to reality, what happens? And so that was part of the idea of having his daughter call him back. And now, that's, yeah. How rooted in science did you guys keep, try to keep the story? Because obviously, you know, some of it's some of it's going to be fantasy. You yeah. can't keep it's, it totally. It's legit. difficult. It's difficult because uh, there is a whole universe in mythology that exists already, right? Uh, amazing uh, fandom behind it. So if you have a grown man shrink to the size of an ant and smaller, but the mass of that person remains the same somehow, right? The density of that person is millions of times more than before, which means he would just go through everything, the ground, everything, nothing would be able to support him. Um, let alone to have an ant carry him on their back, right? So when I saw that, I was like, well, you know, this is science fiction, but there may be ways I've been working more. It's kind of interesting as I'm working on these movies, I'm coming up with more realistic ways to actually explain this away in the future. Because nobody even tried to explain it in the first movie, but maybe in the second one, they'll put it in there. So we'll see. Now, you know, with it kind of making you think about these things, does it actually lead to any kind of research like, hey, maybe I should try this? Yeah, this, is, um, this was kind of interesting for me um, because I'm a mathematician by training and turned quantum physicist um, when I finished my PhD. But when it comes to shrinking someone, you need to start thinking about how do you shrink the size of an atom, right? And the only way I could come up with was, you know, you just increase the mass of the electrons orbiting the nucleus, and so they kind of compress towards the nucleus at about a thousandth of the radius that they used to be. So that would do the trick because all the other chemical properties are the same. But then you start thinking, you know, what kind of science do you need to come up with to put that mass somewhere else, right? So it reduces also the mass without needing an explosion, a conversion into energy. So it's been a lot of fun thinking about these things. And every movie I do where they ask me similar things, I'm working um, on The Fantastic Voyage with uh, James Cameron, and they have the same question. How do you shrink people? And how do you keep it realistic when they're going to the blast stream of a human being? So we're trying to figure that out. So it's been fun. Are there any other movies you've worked on besides Ant-Man and now uh, Fantastic Voyage? Yes, uh, there is uh, also Now You See Me 2, the sequel. And uh, Ed Solomon, the writer, one of the writers, is a good friend of mine. So he always calls me up to ask me questions about quantum computing and quantum matter and all these exciting new things we're working on at Caltech and around the world. We jumped off a rooftop in New York. Where the hell are we? Come here, and we landed in China. How, how is this possible? Obviously, uh, I do not do this for a living, the whole quantum mechanics and physics and all this. The last I heard, they had uh, disproven string theory, is that? Uh, well, that would be interesting, either proving or disproving uh, string theory, but mm -hmm. uh, probably not. It might have been something else. There was um, recently a definitive experiment that proved that quantum entanglement is for real, right? And it exists, and, he, and Einstein was wrong when he said, like, 
um, of almost 100 years ago that this, this, this can be real, right? This is spooky action at a distance. It's not a real thing. The world doesn't work like that. And we just did the definitive experiment that showed this was the, the way that the universe works. So now is this going to open up a whole lot? I mean, is this a little baby step or is this, this a is big This is more like, um, it's more like finding the Higgs boson, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which was a big deal or even gravitational waves recently again from Caltech. And it's something that scientists already expected to be true. It's just really amazing to be able to get the technology to a place where you can see it for real, not just indirectly or through a theory, but a direct observation. Um, so it was something like that, but it does tell us that these theories we have, right, they're not just in our head. These are becoming more and more reality and at a place where we can try to bring this quantum weirdness, these amazing possibilities at the quantum realm, up to our level as human beings to start using some of these superpowers in the everyday life. Yeah. Um. This is great. Yeah, I'm gonna probably have to go and Google half what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Thank you so much.